Hold on one second. <clears throat> yeah, I'll put some music on, guys. <laughs> I just woke up. My brain is not functioning. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Maybe we won't put music on. I'm just going to listen to the truck. There we go. What's up? Yes, it's April Fools, guys. <laughs> Happy April Fools. <laughs> um, let's see. Turn up the music. Ew. Happy April Fools. Sorry, Shine, to hear that, man. Hopefully you feel better, dude. That's whack. Sorry, I just woke up. My brain is fried, dude. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Thanks for that, James. I appreciate it. I'm sure the haters, when they read the headline, were like, finally! And it's like, nah, bruh. It's just a myth, bro. It ain't gonna happen, bro. Finally! This little fruitcake's gonna give up. Long fruitcake, boy. Welcome to the stream, guys. Happy Monday. Hope you're doing well. Hope life is good. Welcome to Deathless April. Oh my god, another month of this crap. We're back at it, boy. Back at it. Oh, I gotta make his legs, his legs a little bigger. They're a little thin. Yeah. Definitely gotta make them a little meatier. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the stream. Welcome, 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 guys. How's life? What are you guys been up to? How was your last month? It's April 1st, baby! It's April Fool's Day, baby! Yeah, boy. It's a good time. Thanks, Justin. I'm just waking up, man. I literally got my daughter ready for school. Sent her on her way. And then I just passed the F out, boy. For like an hour and a half. Now you understand the title? Yeah, that's the whole point why I put it up there. Hungry eyes. Them haters have them hungry eyes. <laughs> it's true, though. One of my prop hunt servers on Discord set a bot to mute you for two minutes after every message is sent. I don't even know what you mean, boy. I'm not even on Discord. 
What are you talking about, dude? Are you are you secretly a robot, Sean? Secretly a robot. Yep, Mike Tyson. It's Mike Tyson time, boy. We're gonna look for Logan Paul out in the wilderness. That's what we're gonna do. Oh. Every two minutes. That's a terrible April Fool joke. You know that, right, Christian? That's like... Is your fridge running? Well, you better go chase it. <laughs> what is this, 1954, bro? Nineteen fifty four is what that sounds like. Too really. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> well, you better go chase it. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve at you. I can play turning water age. You need only to the foot. Then it's settled. Summon me. Ah. I bequeath. Yes, you bequeath it. Yes, I know. We always hear about your queefs. Always. Welcome to this room, guys. Happy Monday. Hope life is good. I don't know, man. Tired. I'm tired of these runs. I, I don't want to run them anymore. But guess what? Guess what I'm doing? Guess guess what happened? We're doing it. It's happening. Do you want to do it? No. But I only have like 600 left, so I kind of have to. It's Mike Tyson. Do I have to say anything else? It's a Mike Tyson themed run. Need I say anything else, sir? Uh, do I want this one? Yeah, I don't want that one. There, are April Fool. Yep, four hundred thirty-one. No death runs so far. Almost there, baby. Almost there. It's better to think about it like 700 left as opposed to like 500 and something left. Cause then you'll you'll be more realistic about the actual amount. Cause it don't feel like 500 and something. It feels like 800 and something. That's how most things feel, dude. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, I only got this much left. It's not that bad. And then when you get to, like, I don't know, the next 300 runs, and you're like, yeah, it feels worse. Let's just make it as real as possible and just call it for what it is. It's like trying to go to marriage counseling when you know you're going to get a divorce no matter what. You know what I mean? That's just how that works. They just call it what it is. It's a divorce. Na da da dee do dee do dee.
There's no copyright on uh, on challenge runs, Dustin. That's just how it goes. But I guarantee if I finish my throw only run, somebody's be like, you're ripping that guy off! That other guy, the one that didn't start the run! I, I guarantee it. That's what's gonna happen. I'll have a bunch of people come in and stream and be like, you, you, you need to come up with your own original shit, Ray! Jane, good morning. Welcome to the stream. I already know how this works. I've been down this road a few times myself. As Taylor Swift once said. Was procrastinating doing. Yeah. <laughs> it happens, dude. It's part. It's part of the the natural circle of toxicness online. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm used to it, man. How dare you? How dare you do something that you decided to do before anybody knew what you were doing, and then all of a sudden someone else did it. So therefore, you're not really the one who started it. That happened with the no walk run, man. I'm telling you, that happened with the no walk, no roll, no horse run, bro. I was doing it for like two or three weeks, and then Yanfa puts out a video where he's not walking in Elden Ring, and then I had like 15 people coming in. You're ripping him off! How dare you? How dare you rip the genius off? It's like, okay. Whatever, dude. Smoke a little of the crack, my friend. It's got the Dragon Dog by Tag on it. Shouldn't have it. It says Elden Ring right here. Yeah, it says... I literally... I'm looking right at post details. My last no death run. Elden Ring. Right there. Are you just... You're just that uh, April Fool in me. You April Fool in me there, Jane. Mm. No, I just, I'm used to the unwarranted hate in my life in general. Like I'm used to it. Like I, it happens to me a lot. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a great example of unwarranted hate that made no sense. I was about 19, maybe 20. I owned a uh, 1984 Buick Regal on 13s, man, and it was a beautiful, splendid little lowrider. It was immaculate little car. Right. But the thing was a gas guzzler, dude. Like, it would just suck me dry. Like, I'm not kidding, bro. Like, I could go down the street and be out of gas, right? I was 19. I was a youngster. 20, around there. So I'm driving, going down the road, minding my own business, and I didn't realize that my gas tank wasn't full, right? So I start, I start, you know, hearing it putter, 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 putter. I'm like, oh, crap. Whatever, right? Thing goes out. No gas. Ran out of gas like an idiot because I was a youngster and I didn't know any better. And I have to pull into this plaza. This is a little tiny hole in the wall plaza in the middle of nowhere. And I pull in. And it's like a Sunday and I was going to go home and hang out with my family and all this crap, right? So, what happens is like... I freaking... Uh, I pull in there and I call my dad and I'm like, hey dude, I'm out of gas, dad, can you come help me out, you know? So like, he's gonna come, he's gonna hook me up, he's gonna bring me a gas can, we're gonna go to the freaking quick mart, I'm gonna fill up my car. Whatever, right? So, 
I'm waiting there, and it's about, he's far away from me, so it's taking him like 15, 20 minutes before he even, like, I can even tell if he's going to come or not right away. And lo and behold, this little Jeep pulls up, all right? And uh, so this Jeep pulls up, and there's an older lady, and she must be in her, like, mid-60s, maybe early 70s, around there, right? can't tell she kind of looks old but she also looks like she not, might not be that old so she she has her window up and then she cracks it about a quarter of the way and then she she looks out out the window and she she talks to me directly so like, what are you doing here and i'm like uh my car ran out of gas so i'm waiting for my dad because i can't go nowhere he's gonna bring me a gas can so i can get out of here you know i was telling her the truth whatever Right? She's all, well, no, what do you, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be in this plaza. This isn't your property. You're not allowed to be here. Right? And I'm like, well, I mean, I, I kind of just ran out of gas. It wasn't my fault. I'm just kind of stuck. Like, I have nowhere to go. I can't, this, this car is a boat, you know, technically, because you think about it. An 84 Buick Regal, man, you ain't pushing that nowhere uphill, dude. You're going to be fucking stuck there. You know what I mean? You ain't going to be able to move that shit. It's it's massive as hell, dude. It's made out of steel and aluminum and all kinds of shit, right? So I can't move that motherfucking car, bro. I really can't, right? I didn't tell her that, but it's the truth. It was a heavy-ass car, right? And, uh... And I'm like, look, I can't go nowhere unless I get some gas, I told her. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be here for that long. I'm waiting on somebody to come help me. You know, and she's like, no, no, you shouldn't be here. It's against the rules. It's against, it's against the law. You shouldn't. This is private property. You need to be gone. You know, and I look at the the offices and it's like some rinky-dink, like, practice lawyer or whatever. Like, you just like a basic practice, like, well, family law type place or whatever. And uh, I said, well, I can't do anything. I can't go nowhere. What do you want me to do? Leave my car here and walk away? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just chilling in my car, you know? And uh, she, she, she actually rolls up the window and calls the police officers on me. And we're waiting for like... Yeah, it's an April Fool's joke. You know what I mean? I'm sitting there for like like 15 more minutes my dad still ain't there i'm uncomfortable as hell this lady's still waiting in the parking lot with her window up staring at me with her mace in her hand and shit right and then the cops pull up you know and they get out their car you know and they go talk to the lady and shit and then you know they're looking at me because i'm you know i'm a cholo kid like i got me some lokes i'm wearing me a flannel some baggy ass pants i'm driving around in an 84 buick regal i mean come on kids they do the math. I gotta have drugs or a gun or something on me because I look like I, I, I probably ought to have one of those things. So they went and they talked to the old lady. You know, old lady's like, oh yeah, he's on that property and he won't leave. And I told him to leave and da da da. She didn't give him any of the, the dirt at all about why I was there, what was happening, or whatever. You know, so then. They walk up to the door, they knock on the damn window with the freaking uh, flashlight, and I have, you know, full freaking, uh, what's it called, limo tint and all that shit, right, whatever. It's probably illegal at the point, who knows. But they walk up there and they're like, they're like, hey, what are you doing here? What's going on? Why are you on this property? And I told them, I said, look at, dude, I was literally just going down the street, gonna go, like, have dinner with my family. And I run out of gas, bro. Like I got, I, I'm waiting for my dad to come bring me some gas so I can go to the gas station and fill up. And this lady pulls up and starts freaking out. <laughs> and the cops are like, they just look at, they just look at me and they look at each other like for real. And then I showed them the gas gauge, and, they, and they're like, oh, um, all right, you know, like. <laughs> They didn't know what to do. Like, they were just like, uh, all right. So then they walked to the old lady and they said something to her. And they're like, they're like, this, he's just here because he can't leave. He's not here because he's trying to rob anybody or anything. But she's like, no, you need to arrest him. You need to get rid of him. You need to put him in county jail. He's trespassing. And like, 
Like, ma'am, he's literally just stuck here. He's gonna leave in a few minutes. And if he's not gone in a few minutes, we'll come back and we'll get him. So that lady stayed there until my dad showed up and then, like, freaking watched him pour the gasoline into my tank, bro. Like... But yes, the unwarranted hate. I'm used to it. Quite used to it. That's the moral of the story. People are stupid. People don't do dumb things for no reason. That's just the way life is, man. No reason to get mad about it. It's gonna happen. Hit people like that? Yeah, dude. It was just like, what the hell, man? For real. For real. My, that was one of my favorite cars of all time, dude. Buick Regal was beautiful. Beautiful car. I ruined that car, though. Yeah, like, where would I go? Like, honestly. Like, I don't I don't understand what, in her mind where what would happen. It's like, if I run out of gas, just stay on the street trash, boy. You know, like... Just stay on the street, where you belong, in the trash. Just throw yourself in the dumpster, boy. You know, it's like, I don't know, man, whatever. Oh, it's not a fun experience. Yep. Just, I'm used to it. It's happened a lot in my life. The other part of it, of course, is like... Well, just straight up, like... Hearsay, people don't like you, whatever, that happens sometimes too. And that's usually out of jealousy, but that's just a different thing, a different vibe altogether. You know what I mean? That's happened to me too, but... But it's just funny, it's like... Well, what, what, what did she, what did she really expect to happen, like... I don't understand what she expected me to do. Like, I really don't. I don't get it. Just like the whole, like, uh, the police thing, you know? Like, I've been mistreated by police officers quite a bit in my life, but I, I don't have anything against police officers at all. I don't have anything against people just doing their job or whatever. But, like, I've been around people and they just, like, freak out for no reason. And I'm just like, all right, whatever, dude. Tased in the butt. I might have liked it, Jason, so... Who knows? It would have been a nice change, I think. What's up, Gina? Welcome. Extremely similar. Yeah, dude. You know, I, I get fucking, like... In, I got in trouble for buying tortillas at freaking Walmart, dude. That's how it goes. Like, I'd be like... I'd be like, buying fucking tortillas at Walmart. And like, I come out, well, look at, you gotta understand, tortillas come in a bag. Why would I want to put tortillas in a bag if they already come in a bag? Like, there'd be no reason for me to put tortillas in a bag because they come in a bag. Why the hell would I do that? So I didn't put it in a bag. So what happened was the, the freaking sheriff at the front door was like, Are you gonna pay for those? Have you, have you paid for those? And like, took me aside for like 20 minutes to talk to me about tortillas. It's like, come on, bro. Like, for real. Like, I have the damn receipt. Let me go, dude. Jesus. What the hell's wrong with you? You're gonna throw me in county for tortillas? Like, for real? Like, come on, bro. Seriously. I buy from Safeway, yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, they were much sweeter, Jane. I agree. I, I love me some older cars, for sure. It was a sweet, sweet car. I loved it. That was just weird. It did get me into some stuff, though, because it was like... It was a gangsta-ass car. It really was. My favorite story, though, was the crackhead. You know what I mean? The crackhead story is like... So my ex used to work at Denny's. We used to go in there overnight and hang out with her until she was about to get off or whatever. This was before we had kids and all that. Like, I, I didn't have no kids, right? So, I'd go in there and hang out for like, for a few hours and stuff. And like, I'd bring my car or whatever. And we'd chill or whatever. And then all of a sudden, like, I had to go buy something. I think at Walgreens at like 2 or 3 in the morning. So I get there <laughs> and I go back to my car, you know, and I get it. I get in my freaking car and like I smell perfume as soon as I enter the car. And I look to the passenger side, dude, and there is this haggard ass hoe with glitter makeup all up on her face. She must have been in her 50s. And she smelled like cigarettes and freaking cheap perfume. And I'm like, bitch, what are you doing in my motherfucking car? It was like 3 in the morning, bro. I'm like, what are you doing in my car? She's all, no, this is, this is, this is John's car. And I'm like, no, this is my car, bitch. Get the fuck out of my car. The fuck are you doing in my car? It's like, no, this isn't your car. This is John's car. He's really cool. We're going to go party. And I'm like, dude, get the fuck out of my car. And she wouldn't listen. She's like, no, no, no. It's okay. Just chill. We can party. We can hang out or whatever. And I'm like, no, get the fuck out of my car. She wouldn't listen to me, you know? So I got on the passenger side, dude, and I freaking opened the door and I threw her ass out the car, bro. I didn't even give a fuck. Just those big boat cars with front and back bench seats, four to five people across. Yeah, that was so much fun, right? That's like the, the B-52 song, right? It got me a Chrysler's, it's, big, it's as big as a whale, and it's about to set, set sail, right? Yep. It's good times. Name a sandwich after me. As, as long as it's full of wieners. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's the name of your re your your uh, radio show? It's called Weenie in the Butt in the morning. Everybody wakes up when you got a weenie in the butt. It's the truth. Shorty so stuff sandwich show. So what's up guys? What'd you guys do Sunday? How'd it go, man? How was Easter, dude? My daughter came home with all kinds of candy and shit, dude. Oh my god. She was spoiled as hell. Spoiled. 
Yeah, man, Dustin, that's fine, man. No worries, dude. As long as you don't uh, copyright Forlorn Night, we should be fine, bro. I already copyrighted it. Might get in trouble, not by me, but by other people. I don't know who, but the Thought Police. Zuckerberg, who knows who. Let's see. Let's see, baby! What are we gonna, what are we gonna do left? I don't even remember what we're doing anymore. Um, oh yeah, we gotta go get some Cestus. Well, so what's the deal with Easter? Is Easter the day that that Jesus comes back as a zombie? Is that what the deal is with Easter? It's like, uh... And then, like, a rabbit lays eggs? I don't understand this thing. It's, like, I know it's like, oh, what if you really knew the truth about Easter, it's, it's actually based on a pagan holiday that exists in ancient times. It's like, yeah, I already know. I don't care, bro. I want to know why a fucking bunny rabbit lays eggs, bro. I don't give a fuck how the old pagan holiday influenced the modern holiday. I want to know exactly. Give me the reasoning why a bunny will lay motherfucking eggs, bro. I don't care. It's always that one froofy, froofy, freaking, uh hipster kid that's like, you really don't know the truth about religious holidays. It's like, yeah, I do, and I don't care. That's what it comes down to. I just want to get drunk, okay? If there's a holiday, I want me a fucking mimosa or some kind of alcoholic beverage. I don't give a crap what holiday it is, all right? From four years, dude. Nice, Max. It's good to hear you don't know the truth about the history of the holiday. And it's like, yeah, I, I really just don't care. There's a difference. I do know the truth. I've known it since I was young, honestly. And I just really don't give a crap. And I really probably never have given a crap. You remember hipsters, guys? Oh my god, dude, I forgot about hipsters, man, until recently. Until I remembered, like, I don't know, about 10 years ago when the hipster trend started, right? And then they started revamping coffee. Well, now we're going to make cold brew. Remember when, before pot was captured by the hipster? When it was just pot? I remember those days, man. Now they got, like, this is this strain and this is this sativa. And it's like, what happened to pot, man? I miss pot. You remember pot? When it was pot? I remember when pot was pot, and now it's like, this is this specific strain mixed with this strain, and it's like, you fucking hipsters ruined pot for me, man. How? How could you ruin pot? The, it's, it's medicinal. It helps your, your back, and da, da, da. I'm like, no, I, I smoke it to get hot. That's why I'd smoke pot. It wasn't because it was medicinal. It wasn't because I cared about the strain. It was because it got me high. That was the main function and why I bought it in a dirty back end street from some dude that had a tube, a plastic tube that you put film in. Because it got me high. Not because it was the special strainer, it was called the Incredible Hulk. You know what I mean, man? You talk to a couple neighbors, that actually sounds like a fun ass day, Jane, it really does. It really does. Sound like a fun day. They ruined pot for me, man. I'm telling you. Now do you go to these specialized stores and it's like, dude, just take me to that dirty ass house from cops where that kid is like in a full diaper crying in the background. Where I could buy like a freaking QP for like 250 bucks, dude. Like screw this whole this is a special hydroponic blend and you can taste hints of cherry wood and it's been fine aged to a perfect it's like just fucking give me pot dude shut up
<laughs> the dare program. Dare you not to get high or dare you to get high? Which one was it? Oh, colored eggs. That's cool. Yeah, uh, Lotus had a great day yesterday. She got three Easter baskets thrown. And of course, she can't eat candy, so it's kind of it's kind of problematic. She kind of got mad at the end of the day. I gave her a little bit of candy, but yeah, she wasn't she wasn't having it for a while though. Crack is whack, dude. Everybody knows that. Dirty brickweed, yeah, bro. The one that smelled like a like a drug dealer's ball sack, bro. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Give me that, baby. Remember when you'd be like, you'd get that little canister and you pop it open and there's still some, it's still kind of moist? Ain't nobody say that anymore. Nobody says, it's still kind of moist in there, man. Like, you know what I mean? Back in the day, well, that was the thing. It's kind of moist, man. Check it out. You know what I mean? Now it's like, oh, oh the moisture is always at the same level. We have, we have a robot that keeps the temperature at a certain level and the moisture at a certain level. So you'll never have a problem with it being too dry. Like, cause you'd buy that dirt weed that is as dry as sand, bro, and it would burn so fast. Like, my god, bro. We have artificial intelligence growing weed in the freaking forest of Costa Rica, you know, like... God, dude, 20 years ago was just a different vibe, bro. It really was. <laughs> yeah, that's <clears throat> that's what I was talking about though, peak experiences. Peak experiences are very specific. Yeah, for sure, Jane. But like peak experiences, right? So people are like, because we were talking about that that lady, right? That went nuts because I was parked in that parking lot or whatever, right? But it was a peak experience. That's why I remembered it, right? It's like it's it's like these things that are intended to kind of like crawl into your memory banks, right? Something feels as though it should be or it shouldn't be, and it's just the most potential like possible <clears throat> outcome of any situation imaginable essentially right so like when it comes to that like the whole like pot situation for instance right it's one of those weird ass things where like i know it's weird but it's nostalgic it's dark right think about it but the most enjoyable factor believe it or not for a lot of people that bought marijuana before it was legalized was the illegal element of it and i've said this before but I truly believe that one of the most the, the most poignant reasons to its popularity was the fact that it was illegal. Because people love breaking the rules, even if it's not that bad. Like, honestly, like, you know, of course you would have bought pot back like 20, 25 years ago. You would have got arrested for it, but it's just pot. It's not like you're out there buying crack cocaine. It's not like you're out there, you know, buying a prostitute or something like that. But that whole, like, element of danger, you know, in the peak experience, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, yeah, it's kind of dirty and wrong, and it's kind of, we're just in this, you know, dark alley, or, like, we're at this person's house, and we're buying weed, like. It just feels so good to be so bad, doesn't it? It feels good. It does. <laughs> They're dangerous and illegal. Isn't it true though, RJ? Yes. It's so true, bro. You surprised you no matter. Why don't oh, but don't up. Don't let that Nanita hear me talk about it. 
Yeah, Donato, yeah, dude, totally. You're like, now that I can legally drink, I don't want to. Right. Screw that shit. That's for scrubs. I started drinking when I was four. Too much? Yeah, dude, they, they be hitting hard, though, Max. Yeah, some of those places be hitting hard, dude, with their stuff. Especially if you don't smoke often, dude, you're just gonna, like, get killed, basically. I know, like, some people don't understand that element of it either, because they're like, no, man, you gotta do everything with the confines of the law. It's like, dude, that's, I mean, that was one of the, the appeals of doing it in the first place, was doing it because it was illegal. I had this debate with my father a couple of nights ago about warring states and the concept of what actually makes something morally correct, depending on the... You know, because I think morality in the sense of, of self, you know, is a lot more important than the morality set, set before b based on society, societal claims of morality. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, ultimately, I kind of think that's that's the thing. Like, when something's in a warring faction, a warring state or whatever, there really isn't a clear-cut uh, individual law to certain illegal activities. Like, if you think about the Civil War, for instance, or, like, uh, the American Revolution, right? There are things that the British didn't want us to do, but guess what? We did them, right? That's the way it worked. The same with the Civil War. The South didn't do what the, the North wanted. The North didn't do what the South wanted, right? So that's a whole push and power pull thing that happens within a uh, society at conflict with itself. So, by the way. So, like, that's just, it's just kind of strange because the moral gray area really is dependent on your perspective and sometimes you know like for instance the film breaking i mean the the show breaking bad right the show breaking bad is a great illustration of this dude gets cancer dude decides you know what i'm gonna die time to make money might as well just get it over you know what i mean like we're gonna go do this i'm gonna start hustling you know what i mean <sighs> granted the reality is you could tell that walter white himself wasn't a per you know let's just say he wasn't a good man he wasn't a good person the reason why we know this is because when it comes to individualizing the whole merit of uh of ethics and morality that's when he fails as soon as he systematically decided that he wanted to murder people for the benefit of his own life is when he turned into a terrible person granted the show is entertaining as hell and it's very fun great watch great storyline great acting great show i love it but morality, in the sense of morality, in the sense of ethics, Walter White wasn't a good person. And the reason why he wasn't a good person is because he made those choices to harm others for the benefit of his own life. Right? When it comes to systematic specifics about, you know, societal claims of morality and, like, the function of the law, there are a lot of gray areas sometimes. You know what I mean? There's a, a film called John Q with uh, Denzel Washington where his son is, you know, needs a heart transplant and he can't get one, right? So what happens is what? John Q decides to uh, take over the hospital at gunpoint and hold everyone hostage until he gets a transplant for his son. So that's why I said there's kind of a weird gray area there. You know what I mean? And that, that character didn't actually harm anybody. Didn't try to physically kill anybody or anything like that. So, I don't know, that's why I say it's kind of strange, because the idea of warring faction sense of morality versus, like, a set established standard, it's just, it's just weird, you know what I mean? You can't really debate, because, I mean, in reality, at all points, society could fall, it doesn't matter when. So, law-abiding citizen, yeah, exactly. It's just weird, man. <clears throat> that gray area is kind of a debatable thing, you know what I mean, man? Some people don't really want to talk about that gray area, though. <clears throat> but there is a gray area there. When it comes to personal, moral standard and ethics and, you know, what you care about. So what am I doing here? Okay, so we went here. Oh, yeah, I was going to make my legs bigger because I missed leg day, obviously.
There we go! That's better. Well, yeah, it's just kind of a weird gray area sometimes, you know what I mean, man? Kind of a weird gray area. Charlie gets murdered in front of him and he kills everyone involved. Yeah. The the thing too is that you got the moral push and pull in that max isn't even the fact that that happens the way it does. It's the fact that society basically throws him away. And the fact that his retribution is against what society would call ethical. You know what I mean? That's where the actual tumultuous like like situation comes in the idea of morality versus like, you know, a non moral person, which I mean, granted, revenge is never really considered a moral thing. You know what I mean? But in reality, sometimes there really is no retribution for stuff like that. You know, so the the, the moral high ground for society would be like, just forgive and forget because you can't change what happened. But it's like, does that really solve a problem? You know what I mean? Does that really make it any better? Like, it really doesn't do shit. Especially when you're already traumatized as shit from it happening. You know? It's like where the failure of society happens right there, you know what I'm saying, man? What's your blinking problem? You don't mess. Which way up to this end? I'll rip you. One of the reasons I like Walking Dead so much, constantly dealing with morality, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's why I say, like, for instance, like, certain eras and certain ages or whatever, like, for instance, Japan has a lot of that. You know, when you when you go into the modern era or whatever, right? The Meiji period is a great example of this. Because the old world, don't get me wrong, the old world had its presence and its reason for being and existing in, in uh, ancient Japanese culture. And, you know, to the, since the Tokugawa, right, situation, it changed the way it did. Like, Japanese was an older culture. The Japanese were an older culture. You know, but the modernization of Japan wasn't a bad thing. It was how they handled the modernization of Japan that made it immoral to some extent. Because basically the idea was like everything that was older must be destroyed, which isn't a really constructive way to look at society in general at large. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of societies, especially xenophobic societies, have that outlook where it's like, no, let's just destroy it. If it's not relevant to now, let's just completely just obliterate it. And that's a very dark way to look at things, especially when it comes to the natural history of a culture. You know what I mean? And then, of course, that all went, of course, the wayside because of World War II. When Japan basically wanted to take over China, they wanted to take over Korea. They want, I mean, there was all kinds of stuff happening in World War II, but... You know what I mean? But if you're in that era where it's like the Meiji Restoration, you know, and all that stuff happening the way it did... Like, there is a definitely a moral gray area a lot of the time when it comes to ethics and law. Like, there, you're not going to sit by the standard of modern law a lot of the time if you're from the old world. What, what, what's a good uh, The James Gang, Jesse James and his family, is another great example of that where it's like, they, granted, were they on the right side of things? You know what I mean? No. Of course they weren't on the right side of things, but they lived a certain lifestyle in a certain way and... Their laws were different in a sense because of how they were basically forced into that situation. Did they do the right thing? Not really. Of course not. But you can kind of understand why the James gang did what they did. Was it correct? Probably not, but I get why the James gang did it. Bonnie and Clyde's a great example of that. John Dillinger. I mean, a lot of those people, you know, kind of lived in, a, in an era where... 
the moral gray area was pretty big. You know what I mean? The Wild West had just happened, basically. But that's also to say that, you know, society isn't on the brink of disaster constantly either. So, I mean, the Bay of Pigs in the 1950s with Cuba and all that other stuff is a great example of that. Because you never know how long an actual, like, resting situation is going to be because something could always come along just to completely transition it into something else. Okay, we got 15 and 12. We're good. We good, boy. We good, boy? Am I recording this? I'm not recording this. <laughs> well, I guess it's just gonna be on YouTube then. Yeah, boy! So, uh, yeah. I don't know. We talked a lot about lowriders, drug dealing, moral high ground. I mean, welcome to the stream. It's like a degenerate version of TED, TED Talks is basically what this place is sometimes. Nice pants, thanks. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> Underrated talks. It's sad, yeah, it's true. I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, you gotta think about the whole, the rationale of uh, the Bay of Pigs when Castro went and did what he did, right? So like, I know that, that like some people would be like, he's a hero and some people like, he's a monster, you know, like depending on who you ask or whatever, right? And they're both kind of correct, okay? Because it started as a faction that had to do with liberation, okay? But who knows, who knows what the real circumstances were according to Fidel Castro, okay? Because in, in actuality, what happened was instead of it becoming a liberation, it ended up becoming a dictatorship. You know what I mean? So, like, that's the whole thing. Like, you're talking about power, right? Coming into being and stuff. The way he did Che Guevara. Che Guevara wasn't a saint. I know this already. He wasn't a great person, per se. You know? But... I mean, he did him pretty dirty, bro. I'm just gonna say that. Solidly dirty. You know what I mean? And the whole the whole plan ended up becoming a power pool. That's basically what it became. Which is the power thing. Which is it's just kind of a, a bad reason to like indoctrinate other people to kind of go for a cause that's supposed to liberate individuals when it actually just put them under a thumb of someone else. You know what I mean? Granted, of course, the original establishment wasn't correct either, but whatever. Let's see. We got that. What else are we doing here? Well, you know, I kind of want the spell, so I'm going to get the spell real quick. It makes my nipples hard to talk about such things. It really does. But I, I love history class. It's my favorite. History class is my favorite class. I used to watch the History Channel like every day when I was younger. I love history. I love ancient history. I love modern history. You know what I mean? I love Egyptian history. Egyptian history is awesome. It's cool stuff. 
My daughter loves e Egyptology. She's into Egyptology herself, which is awesome. Well, yeah, we we sit there and watch stuff about like the pharaohs and like, you know, the pyramids. And she's into that stuff, and I'm very surprised, but she loves that stuff just as much as I do. We just sit there and watch like history docu you know, documentaries and stuff, and she's like, she's she's gonna be fine, man, and that's pretty heady stuff for her age, but she loves that stuff, dude. And I love I love the fact that she enjoys it too, because we can just sit there and enjoy it together. You know what I mean? I'm gonna die. Nope, nope, nope. Ah, shit! Yeah, we're dead. Well, I guess I better start over. I guess I could record this one. Damn it! We were so close to doing the run, too. The setup was almost over. It was almost over. I don't know why he turned so fast. It didn't make sense to me. I kind of want to start as this dude instead. Yeah, but I don't know, man. It's just weird. It's kind of cool. That whole, like, uh, discussion of the gray area. Self-indicating morality versus uh, overarching societal morality. You know what I mean? It's kind of an interesting debate to get into because a lot of people be like, Oh, well, well, society and da da da, -da and religion and, you know, it's like, uh, I mean... Fallouts fails, I mean, what do you have? I mean, what if you didn't know religion or society? What if you were like the Lord of the Flies? What if you were born on an island? You know, like, a, you know, just a random island. That had no inclination of modern, you know, Western civilization or freaking uh, religious perspective, dogmatic perspective or whatever, you know what I mean? What, where would the sense of morality kind of come from, right? It would be self-governing. It would be a self-governing morality. Something that you would kind of learn through the process of being alive. Which is interesting to think about because a lot of people want to impress upon you their version of morality. And the, the societal, you know, version and norms of, of morality based on whatever you know, indoctrination that they received as a child, basically. And I know a lot of people are like, it's not indoctrination, it's, it's human decency to be moral and blah, blah, blah. But it's not true. Everybody knows it's not true. I mean, because, I mean, if you grew up in a society without a moral, moral code, according to what they thought, then, I mean, you're going to naturally not understand their version of morality. That's why it's a really gray specific area, you know, like self-governing morality I think is far more important than like societal morality. Because the thing is is what they say is uh what's the, what's the terminology for it? What's the word I'm looking for? My brain is foggy right now. What's the word for it? I can't remember. Let me think. 
Somebody's sense of self-worth is what the description is. Like, their, their ability to be a good person or whatever. It's what happens in private, basically. The sense of who you are isn't something that is given to you as like a placard for society saying you're a good person. The true like identity of a person that has like a deal, like a good deal with 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 uh, with the universe is a person that you are by yourself in private. It's, it has nothing to do with what society thinks of you. Integrity, Ter integrity is what it's called. Integrity is what happens when you're by yourself, and it's the truth. That's what integrity is. So societal integrity is very different than you know individual integrity. And it's funny because people pay so much attention to societal integrity versus like personal private integrity. You know what I mean? I'm not saying people that only focus on those things are bad people per se. But you can t kind of tell where their learning process is and where their self-governing comes from. This is kind of how it works, man. You know what I mean? You heard of they serve, but you, I can play turning to yeah, even the Bible kind of says it a little bit, and I don't really get into the preachy thing, but it does say it in the Bible. It says, let the right hand not know, do, what is it? Let the left hand not know what the right hand is doing. Pay your alms in private. What that means is don't go around looking for people to praise you. Do your things because you're a good person in private. It doesn't mean that you have to go out and like, you know, like, what does it say? It even says it in the same book. It says, you know, the, the charlatans on the street, basically. The dudes on the street preaching. You get a lot of folks out there preaching like, hey, you got to be a good person. You got to do right. You got to do all this other stuff. But ultimately, that part of yourself, that relationship you have with the higher self or, or God or whoever you want to talk about comes from within. It comes in private. So you can go to a church and you can pre you know you can you can try to come clean with people at the church or whatever but ultimately it's all about the self-governing if you can't self-govern then you might have a character flaw emotionally and mentally and physically even if you need somebody to tell you right from wrong then you're learning of course but sometimes if you already know better then you probably have a moral problem there's probably something wrong with you For the sake of being good, yeah. That's, I mean, that's the whole the whole point of Marcus Aurelius' life, man. I've said this before. Marcus Aurelius, I love Marcus Aurelius. One of my favorite philosophers of all time, right? Not that the, the forefront headstone of, of uh, Stoicism, but he's got a great deal of, of stuff that was utilized in the Stoic philosophy, right? But he was a damn emperor, bro. This dude was an emperor. He could get away with whatever he wanted. He could have done anything, literally. He was a child, he was one of the childs of Caesar, man. Come on, he could do literally whatever the hell he wanted to do. But he decided he wanted to be a good person. He wanted to do it for the sake of himself and for the world. He wanted to be a good individual. So what he did was he set himself a certain standard to live by and governed himself in private. And that's where Meditations, the book Meditations comes from. It doesn't come from him trying to get published or him trying to publish his thoughts about you know, self-governing moral systems or, or, you know, morality or any of that stuff. What he did was he wrote it as a dialogue between him and himself. Like, the thing that's crazy about the book Meditations is literally everything in the book was for Marcus Aurelius by Marcus Aurelius. So he basically talked to himself like the father and the child. And you know how fucking cool that is, dude? That is insane. He never wanted that shit to be published. That was his private diary. Now, you would literally say, he was like, and I, I mean, like, his, you know, of course his words are different, but don't be such a little bitch. <laughs> you know, like the dude would, would tap himself on the shoulder, literally, you know, he would take a, a pen and he would say, 
don't be a little bitch anymore, man. Why are you being a little bitch? You know what I mean? Like, he was his own worst critic, but at the same time, he was definitely a father figure to himself. It's insane to think about. The dude was wise as fuck, dude, to be able to do that. It's so rare that anybody in the world would be able to do that. But yeah, I mean, of course he lived in a harder time with a lot of different crap going on, but... That just, that standard alone, man, sets the precedence for, like, the future, you know, like, society in general at its core, you know what I mean? It's insane. Does it say, I got a crush on somebody, Jacob? This person's really cute. I'm gonna put hearts next to their name. That's what I'd be doing in my diary. Marcus Aurelius is like, know thyself. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, Geralt from freaking The Witcher is hot, bro. <laughs> it's like a very different, uh, different approach to living, in my opinion. <laughs> like, for real. Yeah, but I don't know, man. It's just cool. I like that whole thing, man. That whole steeze is pretty neat. Marcus Aurelius was his own daddy and his own his own devil and his own saint. And it's like, Jesus, that's just so smart, dude. Dude's a brilliant guy. Brilliant dude. It's been raining here, like, since last... What is it like? I think it was, like, noon when it started raining over here on Easter and it just kept raining man and honestly it gave me like the worst breathing problems and allergies and it was just terrible like just terrible for like the last I'm gonna say about 15 16 hours dude I've had a lot of trouble just my sinuses have been killing me That have diarrhea. Boys have a diary, men have diarrhea. Is that the name of your your biography, Donato? Your autobiography? It's a good name for an autobiography. What's up, Jacob? Welcome. Thanks, Jane. I appreciate it. That's your manifesto title? Yeah, that's what I figured. The Donato Manifesto. So I was playing Stellar Blade again, like, through the, the demo part of it, obviously. And then there's a boss fight at the end of it. That boss fight is pretty fun. I can't lie, it's got some promise. I'm just afraid that it's gonna be trash. Like I granted it's not it's not bad. The demo's really good, dude. They did it really well, but it's still not as good as like Liza P demo. Liza P demo was like freaking bar none one of the best demos I've ever played. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't like Liza P. Liza P just altered my brain chemistry. Gave me the good old mental orgasm, you know what I'm saying, man? Sometimes you need that heave ho on the inside. That's how it works. Squirtle. Twenty hours getting through the Stellar Blade demo. I mean, I don't think it would take you that long, Jane. Honestly, it would take it would take some people a while though, but I don't think it'd take you twenty hours. You rap scallion.
No, it's just, I mean, the articulation of those ideas that was pretty interesting to me sometimes. I don't, I don't, I don't know why, like, I find it fascinating, fascinating, but I do. That whole self-governing concept and perspective is very interesting to me. What was it Jose said the other day? There, you can't be corrupted if there's no one to corrupt. You know what I mean? And there, he's talking about like a, like a message, like a, like a group of people versus like a single person. Now I think that's kind of the difference between like the way that the law is presented here in the United States. There is a group of people that are supposed to be the utmost, foremost, like. I don't know, respectable individuals that when it comes to upholding the law and moral system and code of the United States. But the fact that they're a group will make them, give them the ability to be corruptible, basically. They're a, an established group that has a, a say in the yes and no's of, of reality in the United States, naturally making them corruptible in some ways. self governing is a lot more, you know, I don't know lenient and liquid and all that but the reality of that is also that self-governing doesn't work either because there's a lot of bad people in the world it's just kind of weird What a da dee do dee do. Spabbity bobbity boo. I wish this guy sold, sold a bow so I didn't have to go all the way over here just to buy a stupid bow. And you know the reason why I don't just go to the round table hold is because. I really don't want to talk to Melina. If you played this game enough, you never want to talk to Melina again, basically. She's just annoying as hell to talk to. I was testing you. Like, bitch, please. Shut up. Go away. Go get a haircut, because you look like crap. Put on some makeup, because you look washed out. Jesus. Throw some blush on them cheeks, you pale ass bitch. What the hell's wrong with you? What do you need? I don't want any trouble. Round table Melina crap, it really does take forever, yeah. Well <laughs> you ever see a girl though, like I'm I'm not trying to be mean or nothing, but like you see her and she got some real pale complexion, you know what I mean? And like she'd be wearing bright red lipstick. And like her hair's like a dirty brown color and you just like bitch, you need to put some more makeup on. Cause you look like fucking Edward Scissorhands. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but it might come off that way. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying, that washed out thing. Like, people don't notice it sometimes, especially when they're not, like, around other females too often. Don't know much about, like, makeup. 
and all that, like, you, you kind of know, like, if that's the look they're going for, like, the vamp look, I get it, but there's a way to pull it off to make it look, like, classy and kind of sexy or whatever. But then I see girls that just don't know how to pull it off, man, and they just look like washed out, haggard ass people. They really do. And then eyebrows are a real big thing too. A lot of people don't realize how big a deal eyebrows can be. Depending on how your eyebrows are done. The other thing I don't really like is Cholita eyebrows. <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean by Cholita eyebrows. But they're like the, the pencil thin. They just take up the freaking liner and just like right over their eyeball. And they look like either pissed off or super excited all the time. And it's trashy as hell. Like, and when it rains outside, their eyebrows disappear. Because they shaved them bitches off a long time ago. Yeah, the drawn out. Yeah. It, if you make them look realistic, it ain't so bad. But when you got them, like, pencil thin black. Yeah. purple <laughs> was it for the kids or was like she being legit thinking they look good or what it's like oh yeah these are like gonna get the dudes man these purple eyebrows bro they're gonna do this they're gonna do the trick Nah, she was for real. <laughs> oh my. She must have been fabulous then, man. She must have been fabulous. Wow. At least she at least she had balls, I'll say that. You know, the thing is, you, you, not wearing makeup is not a bad thing. It's just what people do, like, half-assed makeup, Jane, is what I'm talking about. Not wearing makeup is a thing. Like, you can do that and pull it. There ain't no problem. Of course, there's natty makeup, natural style makeup or whatever. And natty makeup is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And being without makeup, there's nothing wrong with that either. But it's like the in-betweens that are just kind of like, why? You know what I mean? Like, I like the smoky looks, personally. Like, I'm a fan of, like, the smoky looks. But that's just a preferential thing, really. You know what I mean? I will say vintage makeup is very different than modern makeup, though. Like, and I'm, I'm not talking, like, 70s. I'm talking about, like, 1950s, 1920s, 1930s. It's very different. Even, like, the stuff the makeup is made out of is very different now. Because they used to use, what, ambergris or ambergris or however you say it and all this other stuff in it. Now they don't use any of that stuff anymore. And, like, the paraffins and all that are very different. Yeah, the natural look is sweet. I like the natural look. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we're talking like, I'm talking like 1950s pinup style makeup where it's like, there's blush and ruby red lipstick and like, they got the Betty bangs, you know, they put the freaking bumper bangs on and 
they got that little extra scrunchie on the inside of their bangs to make it pop out more and like they're wearing a corset and they're like have you know no ability to have children because their waist is about two inches fucking big and their hips are like 40 centimeters long and like you know what i mean that's what i'm talking about it's very different from like the 1970s vibe you know what i mean blue eyeshadow is cool though i like blue eyeshadow that's very cool very very cool The 70s had a very unique style. I liked the 70s a lot, actually, especially with, like, the way the clothes were and, like, just the vibe, the overall colors and textures of the 70s. It means the last NDR I'm ever going to do, Keenan. Also, look at the date, Keenan. What, what's today? Yeah, that whole vibe of the 70s, I really dig it. But it's mostly in that whole, like, bad girls vibe that I like the 70s. Like, when it comes to fashion. Like, I'm talking, like, uh, like, heart-style stuff. You know, like, Barracuda-style stuff. Like, driving around in a muscle car, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? That's, like, a cool vibe. That's cool as shit. 10cc-type vibe, you know what I mean? Good stuff. Classic, beautiful stuff. Soak to the knees, damn. You just woke up. Welcome to the stream, Keenan. Yeah, because Heart is a really badass band for the 70s, if you think about it. And, like, their music is freaking amazing, too. And then, of course, you got, like, Iggy and the Stooges and crap like that that came out in the 70s. But I prefer, like, Heart and stuff like that over Iggy and the Stooges. I think that's preferential, though, like I said. Mod, mod, uh, mod fashion's weird, too. Mod culture fashion stuff, like from the 60s, that's pretty weird shit. It's pretty out there, you know what I mean? Fossey dance stuff. Fossey dance studio crap is pretty weird. Fit a term if you have. It seems torrent, whereas I may there is, but I can take gathering play. I didn't mean to sit at the grace there, damn it. Flossy Dance Studio stuff is kind of interesting, though. It really did uh, kind of inspire modern dance a lot of the time. Like, if you watch some of the Beyonce videos from back in the day, you see a lot of Fosse in there. You know what I mean? Uh, every single time I see mod culture, I think of freaking Austin Powers. It, it was a cool fashion time, though. I will say that. It's pretty neat. And then, of course, you've got, like, bespoke, like, Victorian-era crap. That stuff is crazy, bro. Victorian era crap is insane. Can't imagine that stuff. You know, that it's gross as hell, but it's true that like most of those dresses as flowery as they were at the bottom was because of the menstrual cycle. 
You know, people are like, I love those long, flowy dresses. Like, the reason why they had those long, flowy dresses isn't a good reason. <laughs> it's because there were no sanitary napkins back then, bro. There was a diaper. That's what you got. Imagine how sexy you could be with no air conditioning in a diaper on your you-know-what. Like, I highly doubt that was very, very cool. It must have sucked real bad, dude. Just saying, real, real bad. Did it look cool? Of course it looked cool, but it was fucking terrible. That's another thing, too. People fantasize about the Old West, and they're like, Oh, God, I would love to be in the Old West. It's like... Do you realize there was no air conditioning, no ice, no medicine? Like, you would just die, bro. Like, don't even give me this. It would be cool to be in the Old West crap, because it's not fucking true. It would not be cool to be in the Old West. You'd be dead. We'd all be dead. Nobody would survive it but the people that already survived it, basically. It'd be so cool to get transported to the Old West. No, it wouldn't. It would suck. You want to die of scarlet fever, boy? That's the way to do it. The Doc and Marty did just fine. Yeah, they did indeed. It's true, though. I mean, no one. I mean, no one wanted to live in the old west. They just lived through the old west. They just suffered it. That's how it worked, man. It, it wasn't like, oh god, I'm glad I'm here. My god, it's like, god damn it, we're still here. Fuck. Why are we still here? Why? Because God hasn't killed us yet. That's why. <laughs> that's, that's literally the only reason why we're still here. God hasn't given us leprosy yet, so we're still fucking here. Alright, I guess I better go work at a saloon. It's like shit. Well, imagine 120 degrees in the fucking shade. In the Arizona sun, living out there with nothing to drink but fucking alcohol. No water, because no clean water was around. You imagine that? No clean water? You had to live out in 120 degrees with nothing but whiskey? I mean, that sounds like a really good spot to be in, bro. Just saying. It sounds like a good time. And you haven't showered in about two and a half weeks, so your junk is all itchy and nasty and smells real bad. I don't really think that sounds like a great time. Not to mention, you probably have a toothache, because there's no toothbrushes or anything. Yeah, it sounds like a really class act time, man. Exactly, it was, but in the 120 degrees outside, I don't want to be drinking whiskey, bro. I'm just saying right now, because that's a bad idea, because it will dehydrate you even more. Living during Viking time. I've heard that the Vikings are extremely clean, though. I heard they were extremely clean. Like, they they really did like to take care of the way they looked. Like, they combed their hair. They washed their hair. Like, they were very, very clean folks, from what I've heard. But at the same time, it was ancient times. So how clean could they really be? I mean, realistically, probably not that clean. Granted, granted, the boys be fine AF, but still.
Lean for the time? Yeah, exactly. Yes, it's my last no death run ever, yeah. It's the last one I'm ever gonna do, man, I promise. It's what the doctor told me, I can't do anymore or else I'm gonna get the itis. What's up, Jesse? If I keep doing no death runs, I'm gonna get the itis and pass away. I'm gonna get the diabetes because of how sweet everybody is in chat all the time. What's up, Logan? How you doing? Nah, man. Honestly, though, like the them boys be be you know like we were saying, right? But they were probably not nice. <laughs> They probably wasn't nice back then. They were probably like, make me something. And then like smack you across the face. And you know, who knows how it was back then. But it, it probably had to be worse than the early 1900s. Maybe just a small case of the Ligma. Yeah, probably. Hello, boy! I'm Mike Tyson. I want some fisticuffs. <laughs> no death deitis or deus. I don't even know how to say that. Mike Tyson wants to punch somebody already, man. I wants to punch. So we're only going to do two a days here. I mean, sorry if you wanted more no death runs a month, but I think two a days is where I keep my sanity. Like if I go above two a days, that's when I start to like lose my shit. Because two a days are rough as it is, but like when you start getting to three or four days, that's when it starts to get like hairy and kind of painful. So two a days is good enough, honestly. Two a day no death runs is perfect. It's right, it's right there, baby. It's right where I wanna be. So who really wants to watch Logan Paul get knocked out? I know I do. I know like some people wouldn't agree with me. Because they're like, oh no, Logan Paul's a legitimate fighter now. It's like, yeah, but I still want to see him get knocked out. Two, two is a good goal? Yeah. It's, it's better than going insane, basically. I just want to watch him get knocked out, Logan. I don't care about the rest of the fight. I just want to see him get physically knocked out. He's all smack, he's talking, yeah. I mean, it's Tyson. Tyson's a beast, man. You know what I mean? Even as an older cat, Tyson's a beast. I would not mess with that guy. <laughs> I, I really wouldn't mess with him. Him or, uh, what's his face? Any of the older, like, MMA guys I probably wouldn't mess with. Especially Ken, Sh Ken Shamrock. That guy is terrifying, bro. If you've ever seen Ken Shamrock fight, you know he's scary as shit. Like, you do not want to fuck with that kid. He 
either of them get knocked out? That's fair, dude. I know, man. I'm sorry to say you have the same name as the dude, man. Really. You seem like a nice person, Logan. Yeah, Ken Shamrock is terrifying, dude. Or Chris Cyborg. I wouldn't fight Chris Cyborg. Fuck her. Hell no. She would just fucking destroy me. You have your moments. You you actually got me with second. No, yeah, dude, this isn't clickbait. It's it's April Fools, bro. It's April Fools. It's not a clickbait. It's April Fools. Yeah, Chris Cyborg is terrifying. Ronda Rousey is like not even scary. Chris Cyborg, though, man, she would probably murder me. I could, I could probably tickle uh, Ronda Rousey and get away from her. But Chris Cyborg, if I were tickling her, she'd break my fingers. I'm pretty sure. It's April first, yeah. It's April 1st, sir! What's wrong with you? What about the 1K? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's that was going to be the thing anyways, right? You're loving it. It's a good. It's a good game, man. She became a streamer. I said this fact before, but it's a fun fact, guys. Did you know you can't tickle yourself? Have you tried? <laughs> Isn't it weird that you can't tickle yourself, but other people can tickle you? It's a little strange, ain't it? Alright, let's not die here. No death, baby! No death, this is, baby. What's up, what's up, Danny? Welcome. Welcome to the Stramboli! I realized I'm too I'm too weird to be rich and famous. I needed to be rich and famous before I was weird if I was gonna make that work. See, the way it usually works in Hollywood and other places in the in, in every society is that you start off normal and then you become weird as time goes on. I was already weird, so I'm not gonna become rich and famous. That's that's how it works.
Alright, it's time. Time to liquidate this shit. I need what? 10 arcane, 15. Ah, oh, screw you. I'm at 14. I'm literally one point away from 15. Seriously? Good enough. Screw you, Buttercup. What's your blinking problem? What's for you today, say? I'll rip you to shreds. Wow. Bye. Really? The spacing on that, man. Wow. Bye. <laughs> Screw this. See you later, dude. I was kidding, Logan Paul. I was just joking, man. I wasn't serious, okay? Sorry, man. It was just a joke. It was just a joke, baby, but you died anyways. Oh uh, yeah. You want to argue with people? I mean, go. I mean, the best people to argue with are your family. I mean, you could just go to a family reunion, right? I hardly ever have one of those because I don't really have any family. But from what I understand, arguing is best done with family. Ask Don Toretto, he would know. Damn, <sighs> Why argue with internet people when you've got family? You remember when nipple piercings were a big deal? You guys remember that? What about snake bite piercings and nose piercings? You remember that? She's got a nose piercing, so you know she's a slut. <laughs> I mean, come on, man! It's the best arguments you can have. She's got a nose piercing, you know she gives head. It's like, what? Talking about, man, psycho. That's some psychotic serial killer type thinking right there. It's like saying this person dressed this way so they're asking for it. It's like, you're freaking psychotic, bro.
da da dee 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 do. Uh, could you stop hitting me? That would be awesome. So I was on uh, TikTok and they were talking about P Diddy. I still haven't. I still haven't looked up what happened with P Diddy. I don't know what's going on with that. Does anybody want to tell me on this platform? Because on this platform, I think you can actually talk about it. On TikTok, you can't. Because if you do, then you're gonna like get in trouble or whatever. No, did he know? Yeah, what happened with Diddy? I don't understand what Diddy did. I don't know, because I don't watch the news, dude. I'm not a news person. What did he do? Oh, of course that happened. I'm going to die here, you jerk off. Jesus. So nobody wants to tell me about Diddy, huh? All right. Damn, that's pretty intense, Jacob. Really? Holy crap. Jesus, boy. That is dark. That's some dark shit. Having a member of a love triangle killed, apparently. Oh, okay. That's pretty dark, man. Jay-Z was on Epstein's island list, apparently. Ew. It's pretty messed up, man. Okay, finally, we're almost done with this. I gotta go get two more things, that's it. The setup is what takes the longest in this game. It really does take forever, but once you get the setup, we're fine. Yeah, it's pretty dark, man. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> Oh, man, that Chappelle show thing is classic, bro. Classic. Oh, you know what? That's freaking messed up, man. Thinking about all that now. Seventeen-year-old girl in two thousand three. That was a while ago, too. 
That was a long while ago. What? Really? I'm missing one? Oh my god, bro. Seriously? I mean, that's why Suge is afraid of 50 Cent, which would make sense because of that whole connect, dude, would make sense. Because Suge ain't afraid of nobody, but he's afraid of 50 Cent for some reason. Okay. Last piece of the puzzle. Huge menace. Yeah, so like the thing is is Fiddy has some like dirt on him to where he basically won't do anything to Fiddy. And like Fiddy talks mad shit about him on purpose. And he even says it too, like that basically Shook is his bitch to some extent for some reason. So who knows why? But it would stand the reason if it's all connected in some way. <laughs> you make a full dollar. That's so lame. <laughs> Now I get some some gym pants after this fight, so we look like we're not running around in our underwear anymore. Some gym shorts. Shouldn't have fucked with Tyson patches. What a shit show. Now we're like training at the YMCA, guys. Look at this. Striving to pick up your youngest. Now you wait in line. Nice. Welcome back.
Time for the disaster. Let's go, baby. Let's mix this wondrous physic real quick. Okay. Everything's good. All right. K.O. So I'm going to Disneyland in, in, um, in May, guys. It's been years since I've gone to Disneyland. Pretty excited for it. I paid I paid a thousand fifteen hundred dollars to go to Disneyland. I already paid for the vacation and everything. It was insane. Fifteen hundred bucks, dude. You believe this? I haven't been on vacation literally in years. It's been at least. Six years since I've been on a real vacation, at least. I'm pretty stoked for it. Very, very stoked for it. Man, I don't have enough dexterity for this shit. Oh my goodness, whatever. Who cares? Sounds fun, it will be. It's for my daughter's uh, fifth birthday. She's turning five. She's getting big. It's gonna be her first time at Disneyland too. She's gonna be a five-year-old in Disneyland. She's gonna be nuts. She's gonna have a good time.
Da ba do ba do ba 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 bo 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 bo. So I need, I'm gonna need the strength, the heavy uh, infusion. So I'm just gonna grab this gray sola real quick. Bring it to the grace, baby. Take me to church, better da da da. So I don't know, man. I'm thinking about watching the show Supernatural. I haven't finished that show. I think I should start watching it, rewatching the beginning of it. If I'm not mistaken, I remember the first season really just not being that great. The second season is pretty damn good, though. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is about the first season that's just kind of real slow. What? Are you serious? After it buffed up? <laughs> it's like, guess what? All your buffs are gone, boy! Which, uh, which Doctor Who are you watching, bro? The new Doctor Who or the old Doctor Who? The old Doctor Who is hard to get through, dude. Granted, it's not bad, it's just not... I mean, it's just not modern at all. Really? Whatever, dude. Yeah, I can't watch. I can't watch the new one, man. I mean, the old one. I can't. Like, I like it. It's not bad. It's just I can't rewatch it. Basically. Lost, I've heard, is really good. I've never seen it. Yeah. I've never. I've heard it's really good, though. I have heard it's really decent. A show I don't understand the popularity of, though, is a show called Friends. I don't understand the popularity of the show Friends. I don't get it. I have no idea why that show is so popular. I've tried to watch it. Never got into it. Not once. Another show I don't understand, believe it or not, The Office. I know some people are like, really? I love that show. I, I don't get The Office, bro. I don't understand it. Don't know why. Just don't get it. King of the Hill and Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, I understand those shows, but... 
The office? Nope. Don't get it. Even South Park, I understand. I just never seen more than the first season. Now, Breaking Bad, that's a show I absolutely adore. Holy San Friends, not my vibe. The Office, I love. Dry, silly humor. I tried watching the first season of it, and I just couldn't get through, like, half of it. And I'm just like, you know, I'm done. I couldn't do it. You're watching the Salt spinoff. It's really good, man. I, I like it, especially the last season is actually pretty decent. Of that one. But I can honestly say they did reinvent the whole craft of writing the characters in that film. I mean, in that show. Just for that show alone. Like, they did quite good on that one. <clears throat> You've never sat through the Shrek. Get out of here, Isaiah. If you don't like Shrek, you don't belong here, sir. How dare you. Just kidding. Nah, I love Shrek, dude. I love. Did you know that Shrek is an act is an actual inductee to the American, uh, the the American Continental Congress, the Library of Congress. Excuse me, sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Library of Congress. Yes, it's an inductee to the Library of Congress for American history. Believe it or not, Shrek is. I don't know why. <laughs> that what it fucking is, dude. They put it in the Library of Congress. It's like, okay, it's Shrek, dude. All right, whatever. Whatever you want, boy. I guess, but... Sure. Peaky Blinders is really good. I really like Peaky Blinders. That's one of the better shows in general. But I can't really tell who my favorite character is in that show. Probably their sister. Or their aunt or whichever it is. It's probably my favorite. Cultural significance. Exactly! It doesn't make any sense, dude. Like, I honestly really do like the Troubled Brother a lot, though. Like, he's he plays that role to the T. The one that gets addicted later in the show. Like, he's really good in that show. And granted, I'm not saying that uh, the main character isn't a good actor, because he is, dude. Murphy's a really good actor, but I prefer that character, I guess. The only problematic thing with Peaky Blinders is it makes the people watching kind of, like, fill up the shoes of Murphy's character and gives them this air of like power because you're behind the scenes of it a little bit. So I don't know, man, honestly, kind of feel like it's a little farce, you know, it's a, it's a little farce compared, like it's a farce is what I'm saying. Like it's not a bad show. It's really good. Well done. Probably one of the most well-written shows, best acted shows there has ever been made, but it kind of perpetuates a weird idea a little bit here and there. I also like that episode with Adrian Brody when he shows up and then like when they take care of Adrian Brody at the end, I'm like, damn, that is like the best shit to wrap it up with. It's got, it's got, it's got a lot of really good freaking dialogue too, man. And then you got great actors in that film, that show as well. I really do like that show. Tom Hardy. Yeah, I agree, Kanan. Until you have to fulfill the blood curse, Kenan. <laughs> then you'll, you won't enjoy it so much then. But, you know, 
It is what it is. Da 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 dee 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 dee. Yeah, Tom Hardy's great, dude. He's so good. But he's good in anything he's in, though. Like, Tom Hardy's really awesome. I love Tom Hardy. A lot. And then you got What's Her Face? Anya Joy Taylor, I think her name is, in the late season. She's really good, too. So, hey, what's up, Juicy? How you been? <coughs> You're amazing, Chrissy. Thank you so much, Juicy. You're a sweetheart. How's it been going? Like, how, how are your streams been doing? Have you tried TikTok or no? Head about curses? Yeah. yeah. That's why I was talking about that. It's all fun until you have to get into a gypsy blood cursor. Yeah, have you tried TikTok Juicy or no? You should do some TikTok. Some TikTok streaming. It's damn good. I think you'd flourish over there. I'm just saying. They say that every year, Chrissy. They said that two years ago. They said that last year. They said it this year. I've been streaming on there for like a month and a half, almost two months already. It ain't going nowhere. There's too much red tape to get rid of it. And at the same time, the people that want to get rid of it are just lobbying because of social media. Yeah. It's, it's all social media lobbying. We already know this because of Zuckerberg and like the rest of them, like X and all that crap before it was X. Twitter and all that. It's all, it's all just lobbying, man. That's all it is. Yeah. Well, plus you gotta think about it. So the the thing is, is they brought in they brought in Zuck like a while ago to the the, the whole like hearing thing. You gonna tell me they didn't turn him agent somehow? Some kind of like gave him a little bit of immunity based on whatever information he could provide. You gonna tell me that's not a thing? You know what I mean? Come on, dude. For real, the dude's got all this information at his fingertips. Instead of it selling it to the private bidder, he's gonna sell it to the government instead. That's basically the turn. It's a fucking plant, is all it is, just to, like, pretend like they scolded him or something. That's how it works. You know what I mean? He's got the good good. And they got, they're basically pimping him out now at this point. That's basically what it is. He's just a, he's just the, he's just a whore now, because he's a language. Yeah, pretty good, yeah. I sometimes get up to like a couple hundred viewers a, a stream, depending on the stream. And the thing is, even if you don't constantly have a hundred viewers, it's gonna bring a lot of people to your content. Which means that they can follow you on other platforms, which means also that, like if they don't just follow you on TikTok, they'll follow you on Facebook. You know, and maybe you'll get more viewers on Facebook or wherever else you're streaming. So it's kind of a good deal in general, just to kind of get your stuff out on TikTok because there's a lot of people on TikTok. Damn, yeah, he would sign a ban, but how long is that going to take? Is he still going to be in office? There you go. There's too much red tape, bro. And you got to tell me these Chinese people that own it don't have a bunch of American lawyers working for them. 
Yeah, just do it. Yeah, just try to stream on TikTok. You need the software. That's all you need. Yeah, try it out. You'll you'll love it. It's really good. And I'll give you a follow on TikTok. I don't know what your uh, your your, uh, your tag is on TikTok, but I'll find it. All right, Chrissy. Yeah, you have to drop, download the software. It's just called, I think it's called Studio, TikTok Studio. And if you have a thousand followers, you can go live automatically. You don't have to wait or anything. You just need a thousand plus. If you have 2,000, you should be fine. They can ban these. Yep. But you get what I'm saying? It's kind of a pointless endeavor, man. It's not gonna happen. It's just for show. It's always for show. It's ne there's never actually any waiver of power involved. Like, it's just like, oh, we're gonna put it in th this endless end zone desert of useless crap where it's never gonna get done. And that's usually how it goes with a lot of stuff. We're gonna do it, I swear we're gonna do it. Just like what, like I was talking about before with the impeachment of, of Donald Trump, right? They were like, Every, they finally got him. They're going to do it. Oh, my God. And I'm like, in my head, it's not going to happen. You're funny. <laughs> Shit ain't going to happen. You're funny as hell. And look what happened. Dude was out of office. Didn't impeach him. You see what I'm saying? It's all for show, bro. There's, there's really no, there's no way to do any of it. None of it. Those Bullshit is what it is. Just for people to feel more powerful than they actually are, and it's not gonna happen. It's all a show, boy. You know what I mean? It's all just a show. Turn into a transformer. It's, it's, you're not wrong, dude. The whole thing with the AI thing, dude. The Chat GPT three. That, that's a good. That's good proof of that right there. Because they're like, oh my god, they're gonna. It's gonna. They're gonna turn into Skynet. And da, 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 da. It's like you do realize that the only way that Skynet's actually gonna happen is if the government makes fucking Skynet, bro. It's the only way Skynet's actually gonna happen ever is if the government makes Skynet. It's not going to make itself. It doesn't happen that way. It can't program itself and build its own robots. It doesn't work that way unless we build robots for it. That's how it works. Unless we build a defense network, the defense network won't exist. How stupid are you?
<laughs> Wall fight. Yep. That's ludicrous, man. Champion! They said it's to protect Tyson, Kenan. That's what they said. You do realize that, right? It's hilarious. Though we don't want Tyson getting hurt. It's like, yeah, uh-huh. Sure, buddy. <laughs> Whatever you say, dude. <laughs> Whatever you say. We don't want Tyson getting hurt, they say. You're funny. <laughs> Only by knockout. Champions, welcome. The stars have aligned. The festival is. So is it true that he wants to back out of it? Because I heard this a couple times. Logan wants to pa the like not not to get in the fight. Before like no. I decided I it's a bad me. idea. It's like, yeah, because you're going to need a fucking wheelchair, bro. When you take that much Mike Tyson, dude, you're going to have to have a wheelchair afterwards. Just saying. You better, you better be ready. Let's change this because this isn't right. It's 431, actually. Which means this is actually 45 this year.
Really? Right in the pooper! Some vulgar language there on Facebook, sir. Oh, we should get the other talisman. That's what we should do. I don't know. The thing that's funny is I like how nobody says GG anymore. It's like, yeah, we've seen this, dude. Shut up. <laughs> that's basically where I am professionally. We know you're going to do a no death run, you dumb fuck. Big deal. I had my to become the thing as now. Who cares? <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> the only time people say GG nowadays is when I finish a run. That's it. That's that's literally because it, it's. I mean, I've done so many runs already, bro. You know what I mean? When I die from lung cancer, you guys will miss me, though. I guarantee it. <clears throat> I keep my thumbs keep trying. Thanks for the GG, Kevin, smart ass. Zach, welcome.
<laughs> that thing got so scared. I almost killed him. He's like, whoa, no! Let me live! Please, sir! I just want to live! I just want to live! Sir, I just want to live! Ah, uh, this is just a strength build, dude. You, but you gotta understand, you gotta compound it. You gotta compound it. You have to actually, uh, what do you call it? Stack damage, bro. Like, people don't understand that, like, in this game, you can do a lot of damage if you stack damage. So that's the whole point of this. So you gotta understand, like, this is a heavy iron ball, which, which of course, goes with strength and favor, right? But you gotta understand, the heavy iron ball itself does a lot of stagger damage. It's actually super broken. So... If you're going to use charge attacks, it's naturally going to knock something over. That's how it works, right? And it's got a quick charge check attack animation, so it's a better choice than compared to a lot of other weapons. Of course, we're using the Axe Talisman to enhance charge attacks, which increases our damage output. This being said, we are also using the Ritual Sword Talisman, which increases attack damage when your HP is maximum, okay? The other part of this, though, happens to be the uh, Strength not crystal tier which gives us 10 points of strength and we also use the uh, spike crack tier which temporarily boosts charge attacks as well which increases charge attack damage as well not only this we're using flame grant me strength and golden vow which also stacks for damage so uh, there's a lot of damage stacking going on here but some people don't understand that's how it works in this game is that you have to be able to understand the mechanics of the game to increase your damage output quite a bit Oh, okay, no, yeah, some people ask that shit, Kevin. You're Shadow Man, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm explaining it, you know what I mean? Smart ass. Did you see that? KO! KO! Broken, I'm telling you, man. Da da di do be ba ba di 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 da di di di. Sabe de bu be ba ba. Thanks for the GG, man. I'm still a supporter. Dude, that does help a lot, Danny. Thank you so much, man. 
I love dragons. It's pretty fun, man. It's a fun game, bro. It's definitely good. It helps a lot, Danny. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. close. Baby! That was too close. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the cash. I appreciate you. I'll check it real quick, dude. Yeah, believe me, this run is long, dude. This uh, 1000 No Death Runs is definitely a painful experience. I understand that. Thanks for the 20, man. I appreciate you. Thanks so much. <laughs> no kidding, you know. <laughs> like, I understand, like, watching this is, uh, is, is, it sucks. It's not fun, dude, like, honestly, to have to do these runs. I don't want to do them most of the time anymore. But I have to. To finish what we're doing here. It's the only way to do that. It's the only way to accommodate the actual goal. And it's it's not a fun experience sometimes. It's not. It's really not. I wish it was. You know what I mean? But it's got to get done. It's got to happen. We have to get a thousand no death runs. And it's just going to be a constant, constant thing, man, until we do it. And you know what I mean? It's just how it is. It sucks. But we have to finish the goal. We have to get to the goal. Once we get to the goal, man, things will be a lot easier, you know? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Kevin, thank you so much. Yeah, it's just brutal. You know, this run is a brutal run. It's not going to... Most people wouldn't be able to do this. Most people would have stopped, like, 100. You know what I mean? Which makes logical sense to stop at 100. And move on to something else, but... We're not logical here, baby. I'm not a logical person. I'm crazy. I'm Swayze crazy, baby. Did you guys watch the new, uh, <laughs> the new Roadhouse movie? Uh, <laughs> it was pretty, uh, it's pretty bad. It was a pretty bad movie. Yeah, Roadhouse is pretty shit. Not a fan, yeah. It's definitely one of those misses. Yeah, it's pretty bad, dude. I mean, granted, Jake Gyllenhaal really, really, really tried. Really tried to make his own Dalton, and he did pretty good. But, like, the overall storyline, the rest of, like, everything in the movie, the feel of the film, like... Hmm... Not very good. I actually can say Conor McGregor was probably the best part of the whole entire movie, though. I will say that.
Yeah, he's supposed to be a bouncer, but see, like the new one is it kind of changes it because in the new one he's an ex MMA fighter, which makes sense, right? But it's the whole overarching storyline that kind of gets screwed up. Like I could even deal with the new Dalton. I have no problem with Jake Dylan Hall's Dalton. It's actually not a bad idea for a character. But it's just like the overarching storyline, especially the way it ends, is just kinda like kinda shit to be honest with you. The whole point of, of uh, Roadhouse is part of the cheesiness of the film itself. It's very fucking cheesy. And I love I love how cheesy the original Roadhouse is. The new one is really serious. Like, really, really serious. Come on, dude. Seriously. Missed him. That was a weird fight. <laughs> we survived it, but it was weird. It's definitely a strange ass fight. for the GG's guys. What's up, Shane? How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream, buddy. Magic balls! Not hurt me, please. Thank you. I don't know why I went this way. I should have gone the other way. I gotta go pee real quick, though. Hopefully this guy doesn't come back here. I don't think he will, though. Yeah, he won't. I'm gonna go pee. I'll be right back. Let me know if he's gonna kill me, okay? You guys let me know from the bathroom. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Mm -mm -mm. I'm, eating, I'm eating an Almond Joy. I shouldn't be eating those, but they're fucking good, bro. Stained by my what? Your cut course curse? Weirdo. Stained by his something he was saying. What a weirdo. Kevin, thanks for thanks so much for being here. Shane, thank you for the support. Richie, thanks for the support. Bryce, thank you for the support, guys. Thanks for being a supporter on the page. I really do appreciate it. You guys are the best. Straight stained by his shit. New balcony, baby. We're going to make it through. What the hell, dude, really? That's a lot to read, man, but I read it. Holy shit, that sounds like a pain in the ass, bro. For real? Oh, I don't blame you for being mad, dude. That's crazy. So what's the next step, then? Is it gonna happen again because of the back order shit, or is it gonna be like something that's just right now? That's crazy as hell, dude. You can't have meds sent to you like via the the mail or anything either.
I mean, the thing is, is it, it what do you, so what is the medication itself? What is it called? If you don't mind me asking. Is it like Adderall, basically? Hold on one second, I'm gonna get my vape real quick. My vape juice. Yeah, it's Adderall. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Especially if you have a condition like that's obvious and they say that, you know, you've been diagnosed and all that. That's fucking crazy, bro. That sucks. It's all them college kids, man. They ruin it. They ruining it for you, man. All them college kids are addicted to Adderall, dude. That's fucked. Yeah, that's some pretty terrible shit, dude. That sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, no, I do the same because I have Levo. I take Levothyroxine, but I take a specific red called Synthroid, which is the brand name. And if I don't take the brand name one, I get some really bad side effects. So, like, if I if I run out of medication, I get severe headaches and I get a lot of tiredness and fatigue and stuff. And it's actually really annoying, dude. So, I feel you, dude. That's rough, dude. That's lame as shit, though. Plus, my dosage is pretty fucking high, so... Butter baby. Did you see that Gypsy Rose is out there dating folks now? What which one of you fellas wants to hook up with the Gypsy Rose? What's up, Split Soul Welcome? April Fools? Yeah, dude, you know it's April Fools. Y'all wanna date Gypsy Rose? Come on, Mike Tyson. We got this, boy. Iron Mike. What are you streaming today, Split Soul? What are you gonna stream today? Also, is there a way to get like a direct PM, dude? Cause I wanna set up that run for us, dude. Yeah, that's pretty annoying, dude. I mean, it is a really high volume drug, though. But still, it is a painful experience, I would imagine.
Do you think my character looks- Do you guys think my character looks like Mike Tyson or no? You think he looks like Mike Tyson? I say it's pretty close, right? No love will no hit run on Elden Ring in a few days. Got Discord? I'm barely on Discord, dude. But if you shoot me a link, PM me a link to your Discord uh, name and stuff, dude, and then I'll get with you. Because I, I'm hardly on Discord, but I will go on to, like, chat about some stuff. So, yeah, just hit me up, dude. Just, just shoot me a PM on the page. You think so? Yeah. That's Mike Tyson, y'all. He's gonna he's gonna brutalize the fire giant next. All right, man. Yeah. The the thing is, is like at one point I was always on Discord, but I ended up getting in some really bad situations on Discord, so I completely ignore it usually. But unless it's like business reasons or whatever, then I'll, I'll probably connect with people. He's gonna knock Jake Paul out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody keeps saying that. Jake Paul's probably even saying, he's gonna knock me out. Everybody keeps saying it though. Everybody knows it's gonna happen, man. It's like that, it's like that movie, Let's Go to Prison, remember? And that guy, like, that, that dude's in love with that other dude, remember? And, like, he keeps trying to avoid it, but it ends up happening ultimately anyways. If it doesn't, the fights are rigged. Yeah, bro, you're not wrong. Keep it safe. Don't hurt him too bad. I mean, there's there's no way that Jake Paul can win this no matter what. Even if he wins, he can't win. You know that, right? It's not going to be good for him no matter what, the publicity from it. If he gets knocked out, they're going to say Tyson knocked his ass out. If he doesn't get knocked out and he actually wins the fight... Then they're going to say that he fought a Tyson beyond his prime. So either way, for Jake Paul, this looks bad. No matter what. It, it's just one of those things, man. It's just a soup of bad stuff for Jake Paul. I mean, for, uh, what's his face? It's Logan Paul, right? Yeah. Or is it Jake? I can't remember which one's fighting him. I can't remember. I don't know the difference between them. I just know I don't like them. It's going to be bad. It's just, it's going to be pub publicly bad for him in general. Like, even now, like, Mayweather still gets flack for fighting De La Hoya past his prime. It's Jake. Okay, it's Jake. All right. Like, De La, I mean, Mayweather, I mean, granted, he won the fight. And, and De La Hoya was past his prime, of course. But he still won the fight, no matter what. But he still gets shit for it all the time. Like, everybody fucking talks about it. He only fought fighters past his prime, past their primes. It's like, that's definitely an argument, dude. So, and it don't look good. It's not even the fact that Mike Tyson has more experience. He's better trained, number one. Number two, he learned from one of the greatest masters of all time. Number three, he's a fucking monster beast, man. From hell, basically. Who can't be killed, essentially. He's like the Kratos of the boxing world, dude. He's just savage as fuck. You know what I mean? Granted, I, I, there are boxers that like more than Mike Tyson, but I can say Mike Tyson's one of the greatest of all time. Without a doubt, bro. Like, the work ethic, the fucking skill, the power, like, everything about Mike Tyson is just screams, I'm gonna win and whoop your ass. You know what I mean? Yeah, breed for fighting. Yeah, literally. He's like a fucking Spartan, dude. The dude is a maniac. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't see him either, man. I mean, he fought a dude in the street. You remember the Green story split soul? I don't know if you know about, about Green. 
The dude he fought back in the the late seventies, early eighties, around there. That dude, Mitch Green, was a he. I think he was a Crip or something like that, or a Blood. And he had beef with Tyson, and he lost to Tyson. And then he tried to find him in the street. And fucking Green, Mitch Green, got messed up, bro. Like tore the fuck up. You know what I mean? And then he's like, Tyson jumped me. <laughs> it's like, no, you just stupid, bro. <laughs> Tyson didn't jump you. You're an idiot. <laughs> he got me with a sucker punch. Like, uh huh, sure, dude. Whatever. Even if it was a sucker punch, it was on the street, bro. It don't matter. Like, why even go after Mike Tyson? You stupid, man. You're dumb. Really fucked up yet? That's one of those when keeping it real goes wrong situations, you know what I mean? When keeping it real goes wrong. Being smart, really, exactly, dude. It's about being smart, yeah, exactly. Well, it's the thing about it too is that Mitch Grin was the one that started all that shit. You know, he told he told Tyson that he was an FAG, and that he wasn't anything, and he was a sissy and all this stuff. That's what he was saying before the fight, the actual fight. And it's like he started all this stuff. And then he goes and he pulls this stuff that he wants a rematch, and of course Tyson ain't listening to him because he got kicked out of the boxing, uh, uh, the boxing ring anyways. He was discredited for being a criminal, and then all of a sudden he tries pulling this shit on the street. It's like you really gonna do all that? For real? <laughs> I think everybody does those splits all. Everybody's been saying it. It's so sad, bro, because that dude, he's probably like, damn, it's going to happen. They keep, they keep talking about it's going to happen. Like, yeah, it's going to happen, dude. You signed up for it. Hope you have a good wheelchair waiting for you because you're going to need it, boy.
KO! KO! the GG Isaiah. Thanks Richie. About to get Elden Ring for PS5 soon as well. Help some people to deal when DLC drops a fresh playthrough. Yeah dude, I'm gonna be doing it. I'm gonna be, I have, I have I'm playing on PS5 right now so if you want to hit me up man honestly just find me on PS5. I mostly play on PS5 though. I do play on PC obviously for mods and stuff but Butter baby KO Alright, so we need to buy the, the kits. Dude, look at Tyson just covered in blood, dude. This is what he's gonna look like after the Jake Paul fight. <laughs> God damn. It's messed up, bro. It's messed up. You're it, but I can also that you're not then. Why not? I am Carly. Did we get the other health upgrades? I don't even think we did that. I've been running through the game pretty fast, so I don't know. I don't think so. I do all that and get the other Trina Lilies as well. They're too annoying. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool, man. I wish there was a way to get summoned with the same people. Wouldn't that be awesome, dude? That's why co op is cool, but. Seamless co-op is pretty neat because of that. Da da ba ba ba. Nam buttery. We need a, a, the other freaking pots we didn't grab either at the kingdom. There's a wolf behind me, bro. Look at that. It's like nah 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 nah. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Look at that wolf. It's like never mind. This is an any percent run. So any percent basically means anything it takes to beat the game. All bosses run take a, take will take about twenty hours to do all bosses no death. I've done it before. It takes forever. And then all remembrances is probably like a five hour run basically. They should, though, honestly, split so I think that's an actual really good idea, but I don't think they're ever going to do anything like that. I wish they would in the next game at least make it something like that. You know what I mean? It would stand to reason because of how people play the game. Plus, it would make invasions a lot more interesting to some extent, too. No way, dude. Stop bothering me. Jesus, pot boy. Alright, so we got all that. We need to go get the other health upgrades we didn't grab yet. We don't really need them per se, but it's just a safety thing really. I mean, we could beat the game without any real health upgrades. Maybe like a plus two or something, but... You're going to die, sheep boy.
Sheep boys gonna die. Did you guys ever hear that song Poison by Bill Biv DeVoe? My favorite line from that song is don't trust a big butt and a smile. It's one of the best lines in any fucking song ever made in my opinion. Good song. It's a great song, yeah. So the neighbor has been acting real strange lately. I'm glad I'm moving out in the next two months. I don't have to deal with his ass anymore. It'll be very nice to move out of the house. So excited about moving, man. I really am. About finding a new place to live and all that. It's going to be really good. Finally. He's just weird, man. Like, honestly, he waits till exactly, like, 10 o'clock. Of course. She's going with me, yeah. Lotus spends a lot of time with me. I'm the only one that, that she listens to, quite literally. Like, everybody else tries to tell her what to do. She don't listen to him. I tell her what to do. She's like, okay, Dad, sorry. Thank God, yeah. Dad, stop, please. I get it. It's driving me out of my mind. That's why it's hard for me to find. Can't get it out of my head. <laughs> uh. Miss her, kiss her, love her. That girl is poison. The fourth torch of the Rika. Alright, that's three health upgrades right there, just in a row. Really easy to grab. Super fast. I don't really know why they put them all on one island. That's kind of weird, right? All three of those on one island is a bit much. I think they should have progressed it a little bit better and spread out the churches a little bit better, honestly. Instead of having three churches on one island. It's a bit much. Leaving Florida? I've never even been to Florida, man. You know that? I've never been there. We gotta go get the other pots. We're gonna need them, because this weapon won't kill them the way the other weapons do. What's up, Jose? Welcome. How you doing, buddy? It's been a while. Forty. Forty-five strunk, boy. That forty-five strunk. Mike Tyson gonna pound some folks now.
Florida? I mean, i never been to Florida. Ever. Never been to Florida. Don't even know what it's like in Florida. Don't know what the climate's like in Florida. Don't know what the people are like in Florida. I've been, I used to live in LA. That's, that's where I kind of came from. Which is very different for, from where I live right now. I'm actually glad I moved. It's way too hot. Same here, dude. Live in a mansion in Texas for some of the price. Yeah. I believe it, dude, because it's so expensive. Like, that's the thing about L.A., too. L.A. is expensive as hell, dude. You know? Like, I lived in Vegas, and I lived in L.A., and they're both expensive. But L.A. is far more expensive than Vegas, depending on what you're trying to do there. But I can honestly say moving to a chiller place is a lot better sometimes. I would imagine Florida can be a bit crazy. You know what I mean? But I kind of dig living in Arizona because... I mean, everybody's just so relaxed. Everything's so chill. There's no, there's not a lot of gang violence, not a lot of carjackings. I mean, it's kind of chill. You know what I mean? It's kind of chill, dude. I like living in Arizona. It's relaxing. Is it boring? Fuck yeah, it's boring though. It really is boring. There ain't shit to do out here, dude. Aside from get drunk and get high, that's pretty much it. That's all the kids do out here. Drink and get high. It's a college town. Like the level... Yeah, the middle of nowhere is nice, bro. It's chill, you know? Ritual pot. We who is smoking the ritual pot. Phil, yeah, yeah, dude. College towns be like that everywhere, though. They be like that. That girl is poison. You'll be screaming, Deem. <laughs> that song is stuck in my motherfucking head, bro. It's stuck in my head. But, like, that era of R&B in general and pop R&B was really good, though. I will say that. Like, Young Whitney, Young Bobby Brown, freaking, you know, Val the 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 bow. There's, like, you know, a bunch of different different musicians. Johnny Gill. Like, pre-Casey and JoJo Jodeci, man. The best. The best. Jodeci was so good. I love Jodeci, man. Jodeci's one of my favorite groups. The best. And I'm not just talking about Boys to Men. Boys to Men, they were good. They were really good, but there were a lot of really like non-appreciated groups back then too. Definitely Boys to Men had some talent though that a lot of people didn't have. They could harmonize like nobody's business, man. Classically harmonizing, like 50s style, 60s style harmonizing. I don't know. Who likes Tony, Tony, Tony? Anybody ever listen to Tony, Tony, Tony? They're like one of my favorite groups, too. Dude, I know, right? You can hear them without the track, the backing track. They're still just amazing. Without any vox, without any added crap to their voices. Just straight up harmonics, dude. Just from their own voices. Just amazing.
But then also hip hop was way better back then too. I'm not saying there's there's not any good rappers now. There's a few out there, but I mean comparatively, like if you look at the the the, the demographic versus like the you know er, the early '90s on down to like maybe the 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 late '90s 2000s, dude. The rap, the the hip hop and rap situation was just damn, bro. You know what I mean? Just damn. Damn! That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> You're just getting old. They do say that, yeah. There is some music nowadays that ain't bad, though. There are some good artists nowadays, but. I'm gonna. That was like the heyday, though, man. The hip hop era right there, dude. The 90s, like that. Man. 2000s had some good stuff, too. It's just mostly like the late 90s is where it started to kind of dwindle a little bit. I just remember those good ass summers, man, going to the basketball court, playing with my freaking dad and my sister, listening to the radio all day. It was like so much fun, man. I miss those days. The music is just, it makes me nostalgic, basically. But they're just not as good as they used to be, Mark. Like, granted, everything after, like, the double LP isn't as good. Just, I'm just being completely... Gravel Pit was okay. You know, that Iron Flag album was alright. But it was definitely not on the same level as, like, the... The Double LP, dude. Like, Double LP, I think, was the height for them. In style. And, of course, the offshoot albums are really good, though. Like, Jizz's Liquid Swords and shit like that. Really, really good. Method Man's solo stuff. The stuff he did with Red Man was really good. You know what I mean? There's lots of really good stuff out there with them, but... Honestly, I think the best with them all together is probably the double LP. Still to this day, at least in my opinion. But I guess they released an album that was like... <laughs> I guess they made an album that was literally Soul Proprietor album. So, like, what they did was they made one single album for one person to buy. And it cost, them, I think, a, like $2 million or something to buy it. And there's it only one in existence. Enjoyed them as an adult. Yeah, I think you, that's kind of the vibe, though, right? Split Soul. Yeah, me too. I was too young, man, to completely enjoy them, but I was a, I was a kid, so I kind of remember them. But I just have these good memories about the '90s, dude. You know what I mean? The movies and everything, and going to a theater using an actual telephone. You know, like stuff like that. Oh, don't be too close to each together, please. Okay, we can do this. We're good with this. Oh, you know what? We're not good at this. We screwed up. We forgot something. See, I had full control of, of the game, so you gotta understand this. The only way the rule applies for a no death run and not quitting out is if you're not in control of the boss fight, and I was a total and absolute control of the boss fight. The reason why I stopped it is because I didn't have enough blue flasks. That's it. Cuban Links, Raekwon? Talking about Raekwon, he's badass, dude. I love Raekwon. Ghostface Killer. Are pretty both of those guys are pretty good by themselves i don't know ghostface kind of changed his style though at one point you know what i mean which is kind of weird and i don't know if i was feeling it or not but he did change his style a little bit
this take in? Oh no, I can't. Yeah, there he goes. Sorry, we had to get the other dude anyways. It's not a big deal. Dodgy Shakur? I've never heard of this guy. Who's Dodgy Shakur? I've never heard of him. Is he a newer guy? Thanks for the GG's, guys. Dodgy Shakur, yeah, I've never heard of him. I don't know who that is. Is that a, a rap? That's what I'm asking. It's a rapper or something, right? Like, because I know who Hop Sin is and like a couple other people and what's what's it called? Uh, Reselda and like a couple different rappers or whatever out there. But I don't know much about modern rap at all. I don't really listen to modern rap all that much because I don't really. I guess I kind of like got out of it a while ago. It's not that I don't respect it or anything. I just don't really listen to it anymore. Mostly because that's kind of what I was forced to listen to growing up. Like I love, I love rap. I will always love hip hop. I always love R and B and all this other stuff. But I just don't listen to that stuff as much as I used to. Bought, oh, he's the one that bought it. Okay, all right. How much did he pay for it, Mark? How much was it? Was it like $2 million or was it more than that? About that? Alright, yeah, that makes sense. I don't want to level dexterity, but I have to level dexterity. It's lame. Lameness! Lameness! Alright, so we need what? 15 dex? I think I need what? How many points? Two points? No, it's 14 dexterity, yeah. Wait a minute. No, I don't have to do this. Why am I doing this? You should just do this. What's wrong with me? What a dork. We haven't used a great rune the whole run. I'm an idiot. It was on it was on eBay. Damn it, dude, really? I don't know why I didn't use the great rune the whole time. Do I have a great rune? Yeah, I do. Well, never mind. What a door. That's what I get for paying attention.
Wa 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 wa. He's got high hopes. He's got high in the sky apple. Pie hopes. Do your guys' spurs go uh, jing jing jangle? Aren't you glad you're single? Come on, guys. Big iron, big iron. Uh, yeah, I'm not used to not fighting five Horolu. <laughs> it's weird, right? It's weird not having all this added enemy crap going on. I'm not used to it at this point. I'm so used to just fighting so many freaking hordes of terrible enemies. Forty-nine strength, baby. Almost there. Almost to the fifty. Mm -mm. Nope. Don't think so, birdie boy. Don't follow me. He's following me. Oh no, he ain't. Thank God. I was gonna say, you bastard. That locked this monster owes me 350, boy. <laughs> I was trying to miss that lightning. Should have got clipped by it. The most dangerous part of this run actually is right here. Or jump here. He misses. Oh no, he did miss. Jump again. Run back up, jump again. In the sky apple. He's got high hopes. Dude, what are you gonna what are you doing, man? I don't like when you do that. It's not funny, sir. Oh my nope, 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 nope. Yep. Miss time that jump just slightly, you're gonna end up dead. Yeehaw! We made it. It's time for destined death. You get rid of this bow. You didn't even shoot a fireball, that's confusing.
timed that wrong. We did it! Grand Champion KO! Thanks for the GG. Yeah, boy! Now we gotta tune up a virgin. Thanks for the GG's guys. Time to tune up a virgin. AFD, I'm gonna pump some Vig because you never know he could basically two-shot me. That's just how this goes. This boss fights like this sometimes. Even with 50 Vigor, he will two-shot you. Show the spin up yet. So after this run, we're going to go to Tikataka, and I'm probably going to run another no death run in Tikataka. Because we got to do the two a days. Them two a days, boy. We're, this month is the deathless month. It's deathless April. So, in other words, it's we got to get 50 runs this month to keep on quota to get to 1,000 no death runs. Pretty brutal. Pretty brutal, but I mean, it is what it is. So if you guys want to follow me to TikTok, go ahead and do that. If you got other things to do, I totally understand. Don't feel bad about it. I get it. People have lives and things to do. I need come to stand 
before the Elden Ring. To become Elden Lord. What a sad state of affairs. Commend your spirit, but alas. None. I know. Virgin gets manhandled by Mike Tyson. More news at 10. A lord. Not even you. A man cannot kill a god. <laughs> what to go? <laughs> yep, yep. You gotta watch that hook, man. Knock you on your ass. Here with your iPhone. I mean, you can't do double. I don't think you can do double accounts no matter what, Jane. I don't know how that works. They have an app for the television, though, that is a TikTok app. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't shit about that happened. Yeah, I call him the uh, the know-it-all, not the all-knowing, because he is a know-it-all. He's the Lisa Simpson of the game. For TV. There should be one on PS5 actually. There should be one on PS5. 
No joke. Yeah, there should be an app for PS5. Like, it's funny how they have those type of enemies just talking in the beginning. To have some honor, yeah. Basically, yeah, well, I mean, he all he did was blah, 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 blah. You know what happens to cats on the street that are all blah, 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 blah? <laughs> they get messed up, boy. I'm telling you. Again with this crap, dude. Seriously, you're just gonna do this the whole fight. I hate when this guy does this. Give me something good, dude. Come here. Are you freaking serious? I hate when he does this. It's like the worst RG ever. Tyson did run, done, finally done. All right, properties, change this. One run this month, 46 runs this year, 432 total career, no death runs in the Soulsborne series. Yeehaw, Buckaroo. Beautiful run. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys. I'm going to get off right now. I'm going to go on Tikataka. We're going to run on some Tiktaka. <sighs> GG. Thanks for the GGs.
All right, so I gotta copy this over just so I don't have to put it up later. Mike Tyson is Elden Lord, guys. He beat Logan Paul or Jake Paul together. It's a tag team duo. The Three hours and two minutes is what this run took. Three hours and two minutes story. ain't too bad. Of how a tarnished became Elden Lord. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Our sea will look back upon us and recall an age of fracture. fracture. An age of fracture. All right, guys, I'll see you guys on TikTok. If not, I'll see you tomorrow with another No Death.